Good morning, everyone. Um, we're just going to give it a few more minutes just as people start to uh, log in. It's the usual. There's just a couple of uh, tail enders there, but we should have comfortably about 100 people on the call this morning. So an excellent, uh, excellent turnout. In the meantime, just just what I'm going to do whilst we're waiting, I'm just going to put a question to you all if you don't mind. And what we're going to do this morning is use the chat box as a means of communicating. So all mics will be turned off um, and we will communicate through the chat box, whether it's questions to Project Edwards or the other way. So I'm just going to start off whilst people are continuing to dial in here just with a question to everybody. And if you just check your chat box now, we're going to have a look at an interactive word cloud. Um, what we're asking here is just to share one action that has the greatest potential to improve road safety. And we've given you some examples there, enforcement, education, data, etc. So if you don't mind doing that whilst the others just uh, drop in and then we'll get things underway. Just give it one more minute and then we'll be underway. Right, let's get things underway. We've just broken through the 100 barrier there, which is absolutely fantastic in terms of turnout. So we'd like to formally welcome everyone to the launch of Project Edward for 2024. Um, this morning, myself and James are going to take you through some of the thinking behind Project Edward and its activities in 2024. So James will be joining me very shortly in this discussion. Um, but the first thing, just a bit of housekeeping here, as I said at the start, um, all mics are muted at the moment. Cameras are on, should you wish them. We'll be using the chat box um, to convey messages back and forth um, two ways. It also gives you a chance to ask any questions at the end. So please post in the chat box anything that you would like to know more about or understand, and we can pick that up during the discussion or afterwards. I should also announce as well that this session has been recorded and there's quite a number of people that can't make today and towards the end or at the end of this this webinar we will send out a copy of that recording so it can be shared so that's just a little bit on the housekeeping um we've, we've got some really exciting things to share with you this morning and, and one in particular that you'll see throughout the discussion we have five excellent testimonials um, from some very, I would say, influential people in this space. Um, and they've got a few words to exchange with the audience about why they believe in the movement of Edwards and the power that it is able to bring to this sector as a whole. So you'll see them throughout the session as we go through. 
But I'm just going to move on now, and I think it's it's fair to say, to be honest, that we wouldn't be here without a great big thank you to, to many of you, our partners and sponsors um, throughout the journey that we have taken. And I've just highlighted a few here in particular on the screen, but there's more than that. We know that um, across the country and it's building. And, and one of the things you will notice significantly this year is that, that I would say the higher level of support we're getting now nationally from the police and crime commissioners. So they've definitely stepped up, seen this as being a platform for them to share best practice, to get together and, and have far more collaboration between public and private sector. So that's something that you'll see is very encouraging and a theme that will continue throughout uh, 2024. I should also add as well that um, the theme for this year, as you may have sought in the initial email, it's going to be focused around the use of <clears throat> data. And, and I'm not sure not everyone had the chance to be in Parliament at the end of last year, but something we're going to share with you now. In fact, I'm just going to launch a question if you just want to quickly check your chat box and you'll see and understand why we're talking about data. It, it's to do with really the numbers of fatalities in the UK and, and where we believe we're at uh, as, as a nation. Do we see it improving? Is it getting worse, etc.? And hence why we asked the question at the start, what is one of the items that we should be doing more of? So, so just check your chat box at the moment there. We're asking a question across the UK. The number of recorded road fatalities for 2023 will be, and you see four options there. It's a loaded question, this I do have to admit, because it's not a figure that we get to know until a great period after it's happened. Um, hence the reason why data here is so important to allow us to go about our, our daily jobs to make improvements. So I'm just going to sort of quickly draw a line under that and uh, I don't think there's any surprises there that uh, we are thinking that that figure is somewhere between the 1700 and 2000. I'll just draw your attention to that. That kind of takes us back to where we were 10 years ago. So we haven't progressed. 10 years ago we were at these numbers and we're thinking they're going up once again. So this is the reason why today as a collective, we are going to decide the theme for 2024 within Project Edward and why as a, as a group here, we think data could be one of those instruments to help us reduce these numbers. But I'm not gonna to say too much more now. I want to share with you a number of testimonials, as I said at the start, from some senior people in this space who truly understand the power of collaboration and partnerships, and they hold the positions nationally to make this change possible. So I'm about to share with you two ladies' thoughts, just very briefly here, in terms of why they think an initiative like Project Edward and partnerships and collaboration is a good thing. Every year, Project Edward raises our awareness of the need to do more to save lives on UK roads. Too many people are injured and sadly die on our roads in the 21st century. And this year, Project Edward asks us all to take time to reflect on our own role within a safe system. I firmly believe that personal responsibility is the starting point for safer roads. Abiding by the laws of the road, which are designed first and foremost to protect life, reduces the chances of being killed or seriously injured in or causing a fatal or serious collision. But of course, there are those who simply choose to ignore the laws of the road, and in a safe system, the role of enforcement is crucial in achieving safer road users, safer speeds and safer roads overall. So as National Police Chiefs Council lead for roads policing, I encourage all police forces to take part in the Project Edward Week of Action by taking every opportunity to tackle those who choose to offend on our roads. By taking risk off our roads, we can truly look forward to every day without a road death. What will you do to make that difference and reduce the misery of road deaths and serious injuries? So an excellent message there from Joe Shiner, who's been a fantastic supporter 
um, a project that with the chief constable down in Sussex, and she also takes that national role as well. J James is going to come on and share something that on a national basis, um, people in uniforms can do differently this year. And I know we have the backing of Joe and the team behind that. But before I do that, I mentioned at the start about the police and crime commissioners and their involvement. And the lead um, for road safety or roads policing this year is Lisa Townsend. She is the PCC down in Surrey. So Lisa just had a couple of words to share with us about the importance again of this collaboration. Hi, I'm Lisa Townsend. I'm Surrey's Police and Crime Commissioner, but I'm also the national lead for transport safety with the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners. Now, road safety is incredibly important right across Surrey, and that's one of the reasons why I'm supportive of Project Edward. The county is home to a real mix of roads, from rural tracks to busy dual carriageways. Surrey's stretch of the M25 is also one of the busiest and the most dangerous roads in Europe. We're lucky to have two policing teams totally focused on road safety, the Roads Policing Unit and the Vanguard Road Safety Team, both of which are dedicated to both enforcement and education. But we all know there's much more that needs to be done in order to keep people on our roads safe. And that's why I've teamed up with partners across Surrey Police, the County Council, our Fire and Rescue Service and other partners in order to together commit to reducing road deaths to zero by 2050. I believe that partnership working is the only way that we're going to make the wholesale changes needed to stop tragedies from taking place. Surrey's biggest challenges when it comes to policing include speeding and careless driving, which are jointly responsible for more than half of all serious injury and fatal collisions. Most serious collisions happen in urban areas during mid-afternoon, and in Surrey specifically, more drug drivers are now being arrested than drink drivers. In total, 2,030 people were killed or seriously injured on Surrey's roads between 2020 and 2022. And as Police and Crime Commissioner, I believe that my colleagues across the country and I have a real role to play in bringing this number down. Speaking for myself, I am determined to grip the core issues that make the roads unsafe, whether that's campaigning to raise awareness of the dangers of distracted driving, working with local authorities to change the layouts of roads where collisions have taken place, or lobbying the government for stricter punishments for dangerous drivers. And I urge everybody watching this video to get in touch with your police and crime commissioner or mayor to ensure that road safety is at the heart of every police and crime plan as it is mine. Thank you for watching and thank you for your commitment to road safety. I think that the very important point that Lisa summarises up there is that just over the past few years that road safety has now become central to many of the policies of the Police and Crimes Commissioners. And, and that is something that we should all benefit from, but they are encouraging us to reach out there and speak to each and every one to try and onboard them. We're definitely seeing that, that greater gain and buy-in from them. So we're just going to move on there before I pass across to James uh, to tell you a little bit more about 2024. But before we do, let, let's just share with you what, what happened in 2023, a more regular year, I would like to say as well, in terms of activities. We achieved a lot thanks to your support, um, the activities that you delivered in the field. And we started off again with uh, the road trip in 2023. We didn't just bring you five, we brought you six days of action because we went across to the weekend as well on the Saturday to bring you an edited version of the highlights that were captured up and down the country. Again, I'll emphasize that those assets are available on the Project Edward website and on the YouTube channel for you to disseminate and share. The podcast series, this is a tremendous way of getting inputs um, from many different backgrounds and, and James done a fantastic job this, this year when we focused on the role or your role in the safe system. And we managed to get some really good guests on there and one in particular was a, a coroner talking about his role and, and the impact that it has on individuals. If you haven't seen it again, we suggest that you download the podcast there and, and obviously share where you can. We also tried something different based on the feedback we received from the previous year, and that was more about the vulnerable road users. And we, we launched Project Edward Bike at the start of the season. And again, I do have to say thank you there to the Warwickshire Police and Crimes Commissioner, Philip Seckham, and, and obviously to National Highways, who've been a prime supporter throughout, who really got behind this to try and sort of raise the importance in, in this space here 
in that we all need to sort of pay more attention when it comes to the vulnerable road users, especially those on powered two wheelers. And again, there's more to be seen there in terms of assets on the website. But on the social media side, I, I suppose this is where we, we trump things. Um, again, what we've started to see in 2023 is a much greater following across all social media channels, in particular on LinkedIn. Uh, corporate organisations are using LinkedIn as a means to discuss and share what they're doing in this space, not just on Twitter. And that's something that we picked up on and, and we continue to sort of address by using those daily moments, the 365 posts, which you may have noticed. And I'll go on and share you some of the learnings from that on the next slide. But to, to wrap things up, we had the parliamentarian reception. This seems to be coming um, an annual event now that people look forward to. It coincides with the Prince Michael Awards as well the following day, and we get many international guests there. It's an event, trust me, it's an event we would like to make bigger than what it is, but we do have certain limitations there. But we did have 80 dist uh, distinguished guests, and we also had the new Transport Minister, Right Honourable Guy Opperman, turn up at the last moment, which was fantastic. So we will continue to do our part uh, in, in that space in terms of pushing for more action and asking government when are we going to see some changes, certainly when it comes to the UK's road safety strategy, which is still a little bit out of date. So all that continues. So I said to you, what did we get in terms of some of the learnings? This is, this is one of the things we discovered in 2023. Those social media posts are what we call little nudges, little reminders about some of the things we should be doing and sometimes some of the things we shouldn't be doing. And, and we started off quite generically, but as the year passed, um, we realised there was some truth in the data there that we had to respond to. And a number of the partners reached out to us and said, could we work on this as an issue together in terms of some of the messaging? So what you have on the left there with Joe Shiner is how things started. Towards the end on the right hand side is how things finished. The biggest difference here is a more coordinated approach bringing into play partnerships. So we used an organisation called Flair who offer an app in terms of times when you're in trouble to notify somebody that you may have fallen or you've been in an instant. And at the same time, we played that off with National Highways, who've obviously got some campaigns out there. The strength of doing something like that obviously increases twice the level of media engagement is what we found out. And what I mean by that, engagement isn't about just somebody shifting through, it's about somebody doing something that post, whether they share it, whether they like it, etc., which, which is more important. We also find out as well, weekends is a really good time for social media if you want engagement. Um, people think differently, that they're in a different workspace. In fact, they're not at the work, they're at home and they choose to browse through their social media. But we also found during weekdays, that's the period of time where you would get the greatest reach. So these factors have started to play out. We've learned from it. And what we'll ask of you is that please help us put aside some of those key messages we should be sharing with our partners on social media for 2024. James, I'm just going to pass across to you now. I'm just going to take James off of mute in a second. Hello. You should be able to talk, James. So I'm just going to pass across to James. James is going to tell you a little bit more about 2024 and what he's been thinking whilst out running this year. So, James, over to you. Thank you very much. I just can you confirm, Darren, that you can hear me? Yes, I can, James. And so can the other 120 people on the call now as well. If if anyone was in any doubt, you are Darren Lindsay, because you didn't tell anyone who you were. <laughs> so thank you to thank, Darren thank Lindsay you, for, 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 the, for, for that warm up. Um, I'll whiz through this as, as quickly and um, but, but, but effectively as I can. So what are we going to do for 2024? The theme for the week of action and for the year as a whole will be decided by all of us. And so don't tune out just yet. There is an opportunity to have your say. Um, you'll have to excuse me as well. I've got I'm on day 28 of the 100 day cough and um, it's Sometimes it can catch me out rather. <clears throat> so we're going to continue and to expand our structure. We're looking to, you know, we have to be every day. We can't just be five days in a year or, or seven. We've got to make this every day. You know, and, and that's the long term aim. 
um, quite how we get there. It's a very hard piece of work, but you know, it is. It can only that can only be that can be the only end goal, really. I'm thrilled to have um, growing, burgeoning relationships with police and crime commissioners. Um, it's been you'll you'll see some more um, messages uh, in in this in, in the hour that we've got. Really um, excited about that, and um, and and we will also be announcing the 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 formal um, uh, funding of one of our days in the week of action, thanks to a police and crime commissioner. And so more details on that. Right now, look, um, Wales week of action. 13th to 17th of May. Now, this is really exciting. We're doing this separately from the main week of action just because it has grown from something that was in my mind last last year. And so it's that is that coincides with the road piece week of action, the 13th, 13th till 19th of May. But between the 13th and 17th, um, I am um, part of a, of a team at the moment, I, it's a team of one, but uh, it hopefully will grow thanks to Mid and West Wales Fire and Rescue, um, possibly thanks to David Powers Police uh, and maybe Powers Council as well. Um, we will be doing a 999 challenge. That means our team will be running 99.9 .9 miles during that week and they will be strategically placed miles. So it won't just be across the middle of nowhere. It'll be five strategically devised routes that will take in schools and um, town halls, companies, you know, wherever, whoever will give us a welcome, um, we will run around nine, uh, 20 miles per day. Um, and um, I assume there'll be um, some of the larger the, the towns in, in, in Wales that we will be, where we'll be plotting each route. So that's really exciting. Watch this space. We've got uh, plenty to, um, um, to talk about from that and, and, and join do come along and join it we'll, we'll call to action coming a little bit later so moving to the main week of action that's taking place on the 10th to the, thank you for the clap by the way I, I don't know who applauded but i just saw a little clap how nice um the week of action 10th till 14th of may we'll come on to that specifically when we plan to do what we can to support the npcc fatal four um uh, operation and um, that'll be so that I think that starts around the 26th of September and goes into October and we will be um, working alongside pacts to uh, for a, a parliamentary reception the, I suppose the only thing that could put the dampers on that might be if an election is is in, in that sort of time that might make things very difficult a general election but we'll play it by it we'll see how things go next slide please Mr Lindsay OK, oh, I've probably told you uh, plenty about this. I mean, the key thing about this this Wales event, you know, we want to get engagement. We want to visit schools, let's say four schools on each of those five days. Um, we want children to sign pledges and to join in. You know, if there's a playground, we'll do a couple of laps of the playground and they can all join in if they can. And anyone else can join in for an hour, a mile, whatever they want um, on foot, on a bicycle. Uh, or even riding a horse. Um, so we just want to, uh, lots of engagement. And, and you know, that's a brilliant opportunity there, hopefully raising some, some decent sponsorship money um, for road peace. It will be fully bilingual as well. Uh, that's, that's important. Thank you, Darren. I would add there as well, James. We love a bit of healthy competition, don't we? So uh, no pressure there to our friends in Scotland, but we have England covered, we have Wales covered. Let's see what Scotland do. But uh, talks are underway. So the the week of action starting Monday, tenth uh, of May, running through to the Friday the fourteenth. Sorry, not May. Monday the tenth of June to Friday the fourteenth of June. This has been the, the 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 reason for this week is that the, the there are police and crime commissioner elections on the second of May. Our plan is to embed this week of action in into as many um, plans for police and crime commissioners as possible. Um, of course, we would love to continue to work with the ones who are there and who want to stay in, in place because they've supported us and would continue to support us. But it's important that we make ourselves known to 
to whoever will be coming in as potentially in some areas new police and crime commissioners and this would give them a uh, five weeks since after their election before um needing to get involved with this but we want to make this sort of irresistible to any police and crime commissioner so the theme will decide different topics for each day and we encourage as we have always encouraged you know, to get involved we like to get out and about to visit and to 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 showcase best practice we can't go everywhere so we have the the um we we will have in place a sort of production unit who will be taking in um your pictures your your videos short videos and things so that there will be a, a daily 15 minute you know highlights show to 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 to, to demonstrate far and wide what we're trying to achieve what we're seeing what are some really good examples of good practice and you know where that can be replicated so that's kind of what the week of action is looking like moving on darren please this is just a, an example don't tune out just because you don't see your region there because it is purely you know illustrative but we um what i will do is focus now on 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 Wednesday the 12th of, of June because we have that confirmed um, thanks to funding from the Warwickshire Police and Crime Commissioner Philip Seckham and that means we can plan a really good day there. Now there I'll just sort of share the thinking that we have at the moment. There are three elements to it. The, the sort of symposium, there will be some kind of high level meeting or, or, or conference mini conference um, on we, the topics we don't know yet because that's for discussion but it's it's an exciting discussion to have um, and it will be you know very much led by Warwickshire what are the key issues what do they want to highlight in their area second thing um, is public engagement so that will put us for example at Warwick services or at Corley services or at rugby services um, where we will engage on a particular topic. It may be on fatigue, talking to, to motorists. It may be specifically with heavy goods vehicle drivers and business drivers um, with sort of well-being issues um, in, in mind. So that's the public side of things. The third part of it will be um, as high as possible presence um, uh, of the police. Um, and I'll come on to specifically how we might be looking to do that. Um, so we would want over that 24, the 24 hour period where Warwickshire sort of ho holds the torch, we want from 7 a.m. on Wednesday the 12th till 7 a.m. on Thursday the 13th to be able to have no road death, no serious injury. I know it's, you know, whether we have it or not will not be uh, it, it won't be down to Project Edward, of course not, but that's what we must aim for. But we want also to report on what does happen and, and you know, sort of real time reporting or at least every six hours an update for the media on what's going on that day and, and what resources are being deployed, what offences are being looked for and, and how we are kind of being as smart as we can in uh, proactively being out there reducing risk. So that's that's Warwickshire confirmed uh, as a venue. We are you know, eminently scalable. So it says there, Scotland, North East, London, South West. Well, look, you know, if you represent an area, a county, a region, and you want to see your name there, that's fine. Let's get let's get a conversation going and think. Well, what do what will you need to do for that to happen? How can you support it? Um, and it, it it's um, it's exciting. You know, we can we can scale up our resources in order to to ensure that 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 can happen. Um, so you know, we want to have conversations to get that to get that moving. So please um, be in touch and think how that could work. So is this my last slide, Darren, or do I? Um, um, Well, I'll carry on. Um, it's your it's your last slide, James, and then we've got a couple of videos to exchange. Hashtag Project Edward. Make that part of your comms plan. Um, you know, do uh, organise an event. You know, as I said, we can't be everywhere, but you can be part of of Edward and the Week of Action. You know, we will support what you're doing as best we can, and and that will be you know, as the scale of the Week of Action 
kind of becomes obvious, we will know what can be done and, and how we will be sharing, supporting and engaging with what you're doing. So you know, please you know, do do what you can. Um, yeah, the, the week of action is a perfect opportunity um, to make uh, a media announcement. As an example, um, I work very closely with Gen Motoring Assist, who were the very first supporters of Project Edward when it was first running in 2016. Now, Gem are behind a fantastic initiative called Blue Light Aware, and there are new videos coming. It's a series of little videos to explain to members of the public how to stay safe and legal when when dealing with a, you know, we're making way for a, a blue light emergency vehicle. Um, they've got a great suite of videos on that and there'll be no, a, another, um, uh, a, few, a few videos that will be um, launched in time for, for the week of action. That's just one example, one thing to do. So, and it says there, could we consider a visit? Well, we want, it's not so much about us visiting, it's about your event and how you're supporting. And, and if we can be there, then we will, but it's it's. I'm trying to take the emphasis away from our the, the road trips that have been part of Edward for some for some years, you know, just to make sure that you know where the focus needs to be, which is on the replicable good practice, not 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 on the journeys that we make to go from one to the other. If you see what I mean, hope that all helps. Um, so I'll, ha I'll just as my voice is running out, um, Darren, I'll. No, that's, that's excellent, James, which takes us nicely into some examples um, that's been shared with us from the Police and Crime Commissioners. The next one we'd like to share with you is Joy, Joy Allen. And I know Joy is on the call with us. So, Joy, thank you for joining us this morning. As the EMPCC lead for Drink Drug Driving, you'll not be surprised that I would like us to do more drug alcohol roadside tests. We've had some incredible successes this year in Durham. At Christmas, 1,735 people were stop checked and 124 of those were arrested. Operation SNAP saw 500 videos uploaded by members of the public, 410 resulted in positive action. Operation Bike Safe saw 120 places booked within four hours and 1,200 are now on the waiting list. I'm really looking forward to the launch of Operation Park Safe which will allow the public to upload CCTV footage of dangerous parking around schools and junctions. Together, we can work towards our goal of every day without a road death. Joy, that, that, that is excellent what you had to share there. And I think it just demonstrates as well the power of data and having statistics available to show that improvements can be made when focused. So thank you for that, Joy. James, I'm just going to briefly pass back to you here because this this is the the, the one little nugget that we will be sharing this year in terms of something different. Um, and it's about give give us 20 minutes. I'm just going to pass that over to you again. Right. This is a message aimed specifically at operational police officers. Um, this comes from a conversation that I had at the parliamentary event with uh, CC Shiner and with Dan Campbell from Agilisys and, and which was backed up by um, a, a really inspiring um, call with a, a lady called Ursula Edström, who is a, an Edström. Do you think I, anyone speaks Swedish? Was that good? Hope so. Um, she is an inspector in, and a traffic strategist with the, the Swedish police and has 35 years experience in that role. OK, so this is what happens. Um, Police work is the number one factor for speed reduction in Sweden, and there are massive benefits for seeing the police out there. So what they do, because they have stretched resources in roads policing, every uniformed officer in Sweden provides 20 minutes of road policing activity um, on each shift. That's not, that's not in their week of action, that's every day, because they are focused on every day. So. <clears throat> Is that replicable? Can we encourage every uniformed officer who's on duty to allocate 20 minutes for roads policing activity on each shift in our week of action? Now, I put that to Warwickshire and said, how would you feel about suggesting that? And the reaction was really um, positive, especially, um, it sort of ties in because Warwickshire have the, um, 
and use the, the data that's made available by Agilisys so they, they can find, you know, they can, basically they're using the system, the safe system to increase safety. They are knowing where to prioritize and using traffic incident data. So that, that we hope will be something every force can consider. I know it's unlikely that every force will implement it, but it's just an idea and, and it's meant to be um, high profile. You know, even if an officer is just standing at the side of the road consulting a, you know, um, a, a tablet and looking at, you know, just being seen is vital and has that halo effect. So um, it's now being replicated in Finland and also in, in Japan. Um, and the idea that you know, 20,000 officers doing 20 minutes a day gets better results than perhaps just 300 officers doing eight hours a day. So how about that as a possibility? I'll be interested to get any feedback from forces thinking, well, that's a good idea or telling me why it's not possible. Hope that's helpful. Back to you, Darren. Yeah, and no, I know, James, I think that's a tremendous initiative for 2024, especially where the majority of our supporters um, do come from uniforms and just to back that up, really, we've heard from Joy talking about some initiatives in Durham. We also have a very influential PCC down in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, Donna Jones, who just wants to share a few words with you all. Across the UK, too many people are killed or seriously injured on our roads. And here in Hampshire in the Isle of Wight, it's no different. We have been taking big steps to make our roads safer. We've introduced more NPR cameras. We're working with local authorities to ensure that speed restrictions and civil engineering solutions are put in place to keep our villages, our cities and our towns safer. This is going to be a top priority for me in my new police and crime plan from 2024 to 2028. I'm grateful for all of the work that the Project Edward team have done and I'm looking forward to working with them to make the roads across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight some of the safest in the country. Excellent. So again, thank you Donna for that message. It just really does show the sort of level of support that's being given nationally um, through the Police and Crimes Commissioners. Now, I just want to move on before we come to deciding the theme for 2024, the drum roll. Um, James alluded at the start that everything we can do is scalable, but it really does come down to longer term funding. And in the background, we've been working really hard in 2023 to try and find some sustainable funding to make Edward not just a week of action, but every day, as it says in the title. We continue to get that support from our private sectors, <clears throat> but we have to keep them engaged, intrigued, um, and at the same time, bring value to the private sector. We know how um, the dollar there is, is earned, uh, and that continues to be a successful stream of income. We've also applied to a number of grant funding opportunities in 2023, and fingers crossed a number of them may come off. If they do, it will allow us to scale up activities in 2024. And we've been talking throughout today the importance of the Police and Crime Commissioners, and, and we're very encouraged about the level of support being provided by them. They are a key component to help make a difference there, certainly with partnerships. And the final thing as well that we've we've applied for is, is a number of uh, applications. And this is anchored around data. The feedback we're getting is that it's, it's extremely difficult for people operationally to do their work when the data is 12 months old. Um, and what we're saying there is that it's great for academics uh, and it helps sort of uh, point the needle of the compass in a direction, but it doesn't really help you as practitioners to know where to invest your time and your funding and, and that is something that we will be working on with a number of our parts to see can we make that data more readily available and, and also the accuracy of that data so, so watch this space in terms of funding for 2024 we think everyone will benefit from that so i'm just going to move on now to the final um video that we have here and this is one of our long outstanding supporters in fact this lady here in the picture Ruth Purdy is one hell of a lady and she really did get behind Edward in its early days uh, and get it off the ground and that's where I first met her and, and Ruth has just got a few words to share with you all in terms of where she sees the importance of partnerships and collaboration. 
I'm really pleased to be able to offer my continued support for Project Edward. Our organisations, that is UK Row Ed and the Road Safety Trust, really have values that align with those of Edward. We share a joint vision for zero deaths and zero injuries on UK roads. And we will play our part as we all together work towards every day without a road death. I have had an involvement in Edward right from the very start. And I'm very excited this year to see support growing from chief constables and police and crime commissioners of England and Wales, because their support to making a difference is vital. Project Edward advocates the safe system. And I think this year's week of action gives us all the opportunity to consider the role we each play within it and to challenge everyone we know and work with to do the same. So therefore I invite the Edward team to maintain their focus on celebrating, sharing and replicating the good practice that they've developed over the last few years. There is no better place to start than among the many brilliant projects funded by the Road Tra Safety Trust. And I'm sure you will find some great work that will save lives. So do give it your close consideration and attention and we will support you. Because I really do believe that only by raising awareness, working together, and by that I mean the public, governments, industry, law enforcement and charities who play an important part, by only working together can we achieve the change required, and that is a reduction in lives that are lost on our roads. So a very powerful message there from Ruth in terms of how do we take that step to making every day without a road death? And I've said this, and I never get tired of saying it, but uh, we do like to emphasise the point here in that in the UK on average, there is only nine or 10 days that we could celebrate where there are no road deaths on the UK. Nine or 10 days and no two consecutive days. So we've got a long way to go as a country to try and increase that figure. And we generally do believe by working together in forms of partnerships and collaboration, we can do that. So just moving on now, so it's time to consider the theme for 2024 and we alluded to it at the start and in the introduction email that somewhere we had to sort of bring in data and, and making that data work for the course so we're going to share with you three options here if you check your chat box you will be able to see those options and we encourage you to select the one that you would like to see as being the theme for 2024 for project edward So I'm just about to launch that now in your chat box. It should be available. So it looks like from the group that we have there, um, we have a very, very clear winner with over 50% um, of the votes. And that's from about 118 people there. In fact, you can see there with 80, 90 responses now. I can officially confirm that the theme for Project Edward for 2024 is the safer future driven by data. So Darren, that, Darren, I think it's um, um, Hazel's uh, made a, a valid point to perhaps explain a little bit about what that might look like. Please, yeah, James, go ahead. No, I was asking, not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's, um, well, I think it's something that will, you know, that will guide the, the components of the week of action and 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 the value of data in, in, in everything that we do and how data can guide um, what we do, but how we can campaign or raise awareness of the, the kind of where there are shortcomings in, in data and work out where can we get better data, more up-to-date data, data that we, can, that we can use now to guide decisions that might in, be able to be um, more quickly influential as well as kind of looking further down the road I'm just sort of reflecting and, and thinking that off the top of my head that might be where I would be going with that title 
Yeah, and, and I would add to that, James. Thank you for, for sharing that. I didn't see it in the chat is that we recently had a conversation with Transport for London and we all know that they're, they're quite heavily resourced, but at the same time in the capital there, there's a lot of people moving around and they have some very good reporting. But at the same time, they have even said there is certain information not available to them that they would like to see be made available. Um, and also the accuracy of that data and how it's collated and collected. So it just really gives us all an opportunity in 2024 to sort of push a little bit harder on some of these pressure points where there's some blockages. And also to ask the question, is there some open data out there that's readily available? And what I allude to there is a number of us are all sitting on data. Some are more reluctant to share that because there can be some commercial value in it. But we know through some of our partners, certainly the private sector partners, that for the right cause, they are open to sharing that data. So, so we strongly encourage in 2024 is to start some of these conversations to see what that could look like. Darren, yeah. I'm going to just point to a, um, a, a valid suggestion from Simon Turner. Mm -hmm. um, where we can combine because we, we don't you know nothing this isn't a binding referendum is it um so you know, smart actions can deliver a safe future so we we may have a play around with it and just come is, is that all right or um, is that very undemocratic of me to 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 uh to wade in like that not at all james at the say at the end of the day there we're here to listen to what um the partners, the people have to say on this as a subject. And I think we've always just tried to provide the backbone here so that people can animate some of these actions in the field. So yes, we, we will take that into to consideration what's being said in the chat there. But I suppose that also begs the question now, just to move things on, um, we do have the chance for some questions, Q&A now. We've come to the end of what it is we wanted to present as a core. And we'll just see if we can pick up from anything in the chats there, James, that you may have seen. Um, I think um, from from Desi at National Highways, I saw a question. Would each day of the action week be focused on one pillar or area of the safe system, safe system approach? My personal feeling is, is that the answer would be no, um, but I'm very happy to be kind of told that it should be. Um, however, I don't like this 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 because it that they all are interchanged and and i think edward most influences the safer road users as as a component perhaps rather than a pillar um and and that's where we will be focusing but they all feed into each other but i'm i'm less keen to have a, a kind of one thing for each day but i i'm happy to be a um, overruled and, and the Wait, thing that what? I'm going to cl Wait. clarify there, James, as well, Sarah asked the question, will we have a definitive answer for the theme? And if so, by when? We will have a definitive answer by end of play today. So any communications coming out from us thereafter, and I'll emphasise as well, this session is being recorded. You should get a link to the recording of this session should you wish to share it with others, because I know some people couldn't attend. And we will also share as well across social media what has been decided by the group today for the theme for 2024. OK, a number of you are now coming in and saying, I agree about smart actions can deliver a safer future. So it, it's definitely generating support. And again, this is why we've, we've done what we've done here, rather than just saying this will be the theme for 2024. Um, Heidi, oh sorry, Hidi Dufay, I think is the correct pronunciation <laughs> of our friend from Nottinghamshire. Um, Hidi Dufay says data is complex and we, you know, exactly, of course, we, we must be very careful that it's, we can't just spend five minutes and say, oh, we've got a great theme, um, or we've solved our problem now. And of course not. We, we need to be um, guided by those who use data, who, who analyze data, who who, who collect data and uh, and and so that it's it, it, we we don't make any you know, um, facile assumptions. Um, so yes, definitely. Thank you, Hidi. Yeah, a number of questions again about what's going to be made available as of today. Um, sometimes firewalls prevent you from seeing things or hearing things or receiving things. 
Um, again, through social media, but do check out our website. We will put today's session on the website for you to download. I will guarantee that we, that will be there by the end of play this week. But again, we will be steering you there by using social media and our usual channels. OK, um, thank you from, from Craig, you know, to bring in the, the, the idea of mobility and avoiding the you know, being a little bit vague in safer future or smart actions. Um, you know, we as far as possible, and it's very hard in, in just one short phrase, isn't it? But the, the more precise we can be, the, 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 the better the impact. So we will take that on board as best we can. We also have a question there about the vulnerable road users and those on powered two wheelers from, from Liz, Liz Johnson. Um, she's asking, are we doing anything again in 2024? James, we can confirm, in fact, you were in a discussion only just yesterday, weren't you, with the, the Young Riders Forum? And the National Young Riders Forum will have a day um, focused, I believe, on the, the, the on 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 the on safety on um, on Tuesday, the 11th of June, and it's been put on that day to be part of the Project Edward Week of Action, and we will do everything we can to to um, uh, resonate and to, to broadcast and to to share. Um, and you know, I am in touch with with the organisers to see how we can best do that and, and what what shape that will take so definitely part of what we're thinking that that as as, as young a young riders initiative but you know we, we're very happy to look at other you know other things as well and graham feast uh, are there going to be uh launch style gatherings um, i'm imagining that these the, the week of action will see you know, let's keep it low scale at the moment. One big event, and it said, didn't it, like Scotland, North East, um, Warwickshire, West Midlands, South East London. What, what, you know, we want to, to to fill the week with with big with big events, and um, it, it's scalable. So you know, if we get the, the demand and 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 we have the resource, then we can upscale to have several. Um, you know, we we have had three road trips running um, in previous couple of years. Um, we're just reining back from that to ensure that it's the events and the activity and the good practice and the replicability that is the focus, not not us going on in cars kind of thing. Um, Mark Cartwright, sorry, I'm Darren. You'll have to start. Yeah, to, uh, yeah. Let me let me pick up on that one, James. So Mark's put in there from National Highways the importance of the number of vehicles on the road which are used for work purposes. Um, absolutely, the, the week of action, and you know as well, Mark, being a big supporter of Edward and that, that one of the events, in fact, we just came off a call with um, Semex um, only just yesterday, showing their support in terms of driving for work, etc., and that, and the work vehicles and the importance of safety. They also understand as well that they have ambassadors at their workplace with this as a subject. So that's a big yes from us, Mark, in terms of one of those days will need to be dedicated or have a stronger focus towards people who drive on works business. And again, that also brings together the public sector and private sector partnerships, which is also a successful um, event as we experienced in 2023. Um, there is a message from an unknown user. Uh, will there be a focus on the recent changes to the highway code make it safer for people walking and cycling? That's exactly central to what we'll do with our with our Welsh week of action, where we'll be out, we'll be walking and running, cycling, um, and 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 you know the 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 focus on the the hierarchy and the vulnerable road users. That's a perfect vehicle for that. But who's not to stay? We, we might be running another 99.9 .9 miles in our main week of action in June. Um, and so anyone else can have that template and do it. Um, and so any opportunities to highlight, um, we will happily communicate those. I hope that sort of helps. Yeah, and, and one final point here, James, again, it's just been shared um, about the NPCC Two Wheels campaign will also run from the 3rd to the 16th of June. And, and that is something we were aware of, which is fantastic. The fact that it overlaps 
So there's a great opportunity for, for everyone to sort of use each other's um, activities and, and obviously the, the communication channels um, to disseminate these messages throughout that period. And just to pick up on Des Payne, not forgetting equestrians, um, I think we've already got a plan for Chief Shiner, uh, for for Ginny from Nurpoi, from Alan and Des from the British Horse Society. I think they're going to be doing uh, a week on, on horses, aren't they, in the week of action? Didn't someone promise me that? I think I heard a yes there, James. That's correct. Yes. There we go. Yes, of course, we won't forget um, equestrians, Des. Of course not. How could we? And, and, and just to correct myself, I think I said the NPCC for two wheels. It's actually the NFCC, as pointed out by Heidi Duffy. Again, James, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Heidi Duffy. Duffy, sorry. Heidi Duffy. Yes. So no, so some really good questions there. As I said, uh, we're going to hopefully, I think things are drying up there with three minutes to go. And a great big thank you really to everyone. We started with one, two, one on the call. We've borrowed at least an hour of your time. It, it's much, much appreciated. And we still have 115 people on the call. So fantastic. Thank you for your time. So watch this space. Right, we will... it's, you, it's NFCC and NPCC. It's a, joint, it's a joint initiative. Yeah, I'm being told off here. I can see it coming through. Thank you again, Heidi, for, for the correction. Um, but no, really, without your support, uh, your commitment, um, we wouldn't be here today having this discussion. It's truly appreciated. And uh, watch this space and let's continue these discussions. As I say, there's plenty to go at in the week of June and leading up to. So let's share some ideas. Let's keep the channels of communications open. And again, we look forward to working with each and every one of you in 2024. Thank you, everyone. James, it's a goodbye from us, as you would say. Yeah, cheerio. We uh, can we deal with any questions that we haven't yet dealt with? Um, yes, it will. It will be captured in the time. meeting chat. Correct. It will be James. Yeah. Okay, lovely. We will uh, work through them and try and give answers where possible. Thank you very much, everyone. We're giving you two minutes back of your time to grab a coffee. Have a great day, and thanks again for all your support. Take care. Bye-bye.